driving come here. I don't know why God was telling me about disobedience. You know, many of us who are really disobeying God. Can I tell you that before we close? Many of, uh, many of you were really disobeying God. How many times you hear God say, do this, and you fail to do it? And I was hearing God say, disobedience is one of the things that will make people to be stagnant forever. You, you'll be stagnant forever. You know, God is someone that does, doesn't want to be disobeyed. You know, when it comes to disobedience, to God is something else. Imagine God gives you a direction and says, these are the things we must do. This is how you have to live your life. This is how things are supposed to happen. And you don't do that. You do the opposite. I always say this thing, that in my life, I will never disobey God. I will never. You know, it does not matter how much it takes. If I hear clear that this is what I have to do, I'm going to do it exactly like that. And many of you here, you have been disobeying God a lot. You have disobeyed God a lot. Let me say this. If God can reject soul, you see soul, who did a very small sin by not doing what God has told him to do. You know, remember when God sent him to the Amalekites, he, he said to him, when you reach there, destroy everything that is there. Look at the stupidity of soul. You look at some animals and say, hey, this one is fat. And he took those to himself. And listen to his reason. I want to make a sacrifice for God. And that's how he lost everything. And when you disobey God, it will never be easy for you to be restored. It will be impossible for you to be restored. That's what God was telling me when I was coming. I said, never learn to disobey what you hear. Because it will be impossible for you to be restored. If now, let, let me give you an example. How many people when they were growing up, they used to dream dreams, and those dreams, they used to see them happening? How many? And now, what about now? Nothing is darkness. What happened? What happened? Hmm? What happened? What happened? <laughs> what happened? Disobedience. When you disobey, you lose everything. You lose everything. You lose yourself. You lose the true meaning of you as a person. And you are going to be left with nothing. You're going to be left with nothing. So how many of you from today you will learn to do what God is telling you? Let me see you. You're going to do that? Huh? You're going to do that? Learn to maintain the voice of God by obeying Him. You are sitting like this, you are hearing voices say, go and pray. You say, hey, Amara, what told you? Hey, what told you? And you don't know why God is saying, go and pray. You don't know that reason. Our disobedience, it doesn't matter how big we are disobeying, even a small thing. And I was hearing God that if you disobey what I tell you, it will be almost impossible for you to be restored back. The 
this is more than what I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm saying this is more than what I'm telling you. Those that are spiritual, they will catch me. And they will understand what I'm saying. So now many of you here from today, learn to obey God. When he say left, go left. When he say right, go right. When he say jump, go, God is not your grandfather. You know, God doesn't work by a relative. He doesn't have a relative. The last thing you want to see is the rejection and the anger of God. You don't want to see that. You don't want to see that. So from today, as I'm closing, learn to obey God. Amen. Are you going to do that? Amen. Huh? Amen. You're going to do that? Amen. Are you sure? Amen. Huh? Amen. It's always difficult to obey God, though, and now. Oh, you don't know. You really don't know. God can give you a very difficult task. Just to see your obedience. L look what happened to Abraham. You need obedience to maintain what God has given you. You need that. I saw this man one on one. Simpi was there. This man started to cry. And I asked him, what's wrong? He said, these prophecies are very strong. I said, this is not me. Because sometimes I sit down, I feel like I'm not myself. Sometimes even when I'm walking like this, I feel like I'm lost. I can sit on the bed like this. I found my spirit on freeway. You know, uncle, one day I was sitting like this on the bed. I see myself, come here, come here. Let me have two brothers, come here, come here. I want to show you what God does. Walk, but don't walk fast. Let's go there. Walk close to each other, close. Don't walk fast. I see myself coming from these two men. And I hold them like this. And in the spirit, they can't see me. I hear this one say, hey, my friend, you see that interview? I believe we're going to get that job. Can you hear that? I believe we're going to get that job. And me, I'm here in the mid. They're walking, they're talking, these people. They're talking. And... From there, I heard a voice saying to me, these brothers, if they receive this job without prayer, they won't finish a month. Because everyone in their families has been tied to poverty. Now, what you must do, pray for them. Pray for them to break this. And I'm in my house. I'm in my house there. Now look what happens. God is a God of confirmation. This is the road that is coming from, you see, St. George. You see St. George? I see these brothers. The other one is wearing red. The other one, a red shirt. The other one is wearing a white shirt. And where they are going, they are going to get lifts to go home. I covered them like this. I said, in the name of Jesus, receive your jobs. I'm at home. In the evening, I'm going out. I'm going out. When I'm going out, I use the same road. Can those brothers, they fail to get lifts. When I'm driving on the road like this, I see, ah! This is the brother, and this is the brother. They are walking home.
Now, when you fail to obey God, you will fail to maintain what he has given you. You will fail. Come, guys, come. You can go and sit down. I'm sure you're learning something. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Maintaining God, you maintain him by listening to him 24-7. 24-7. Yeah. Lift up your hands. You're going to do that, eh? Yeah. Huh? You're going to do that? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Are you going to do that? Yeah. How many of you God has been telling you that do this for Apostle Makanesa, do this for Prophet Makanesa. You have never done that. How many of you? It's not disobedience. Huh? Huh? There are many people here. God speaks with you and says, well, do this. You say, but God, why? Abraham today was not supposed to be called the father of nations. If he failed to obey God that day when God said, bring your son out. How many of you God has been telling you? How many? Yes, I'm closing. How many? For years, people have decided to disobey God for years. You know how people are like? They will rather run away from church than to do what God has told them to do. They would rather do that. They would rather do that. So I believe you, you will be faithful. I say 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 you will be faithful. I'm saying you will be faithful. One day I met a brother, you know, they did call me to prophesy another brother. <laughs> that brother, he was sitting, he, I said to him, brother, you know God will give you money, but God is telling me that you will run away from the church. He stood up, he said, you know when you are broke, ne? when you are broke, ah. that brother said, hi. I saw one job, I'm profit. <laughs> said, ah, I saw one job. I said, brother, I'm seeing money, but you're going to run away. Uh -uh. Money, things were starting to come. Yeah, that brother can't forget you. <laughs> you know, you, that brother took us where the supply machine. Supply machine. Hey, uh, me, I was looking, I was saying, at last, I'm not going to fly with people. Because he promised a supply machine. <laughs> the brother promised us a fly machine. Even today, we are still waiting for the fly machine. He ran away. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm sure you heard what I told you.